In the heart of America, the Toyota Camry Range is one of the best selling vehicles of all time. For me, it holds a special place in my heart. It was the car that I learned to drive in, a steadfast companion from my father who owned the car for over a decade. The influence it has on American driving culture is profound, mirroring the journey of another vehicle, Volkswagen Santana, which carved out its own legacy in China. Let's find out why. The 1980s marked a time of sweeping change in China. As the nation began to modernize, the Santana emerged as a beacon of hope and a symbol of progress. Volkswagen aimed to create a family sedan that was reliable and practical, hoping to replicate the success of the iconic MK1 Golf. This year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Golf, which overcame doubts about whether it could match the legendary impact of the Beetle. Through economical designs and a wide appeal, the Golf navigated the oil crisis and propelled Volkswagen out of a financial slump, positioned strategically between the economical Golf and the family-friendly Passat. The Santana was built on the versatile B2 platform shared with the Passat and the Audi 8. Passat 2 captured families' hearts with its spaciousness and range of engine options drawing significant public attention. Yet despite its potential, the Santana struggled to find its footing in the German market, with production running from 1981 to 1984 before it was rebranded as the Passat in 1985. The Golf and the Passat actually was upheld in the production numbers for Volkswagen those years, and the Santana felt like the classmate who always felt out of place among the popular kids. And thus, the story of the Volkswagen Santana comes to an end. Or did it? In 1979, a high-ranking Chinese official approached Volkswagen with a vision for a joint venture. By 1983, after careful examination of the Santana, another official recognized its potential in the Chinese market. Production commenced later that year, leading to the establishment of Shanghai Volkswagen in 1984. Before the venture, the auto market was largely state controlled, with many automobiles that were made in China were mostly commercial vehicles such as trucks and buses. This made personal car ownership very rare in the country as many of the vehicles were for industrial and military purposes. Most people in the country either use public transportation or bicycles. The auto market in China needed a boost, and the Santana would be that boost. Almost instantly, the Santana captured the hearts of the Chinese consumers, becoming the vehicle of choice for taxi companies and government fleets alike. Production began in 1985, and the first cars came with the 1.6 liter engine produced 87 horsepower. In 1987, a 1.8 liter version of the engine came with 94 horsepower. Remarkably, the 1.6 engine continued to be offered until 2006. Even today, the original Santana is still on the market, powered by a 1.8 engine, starting around 50,000 yuan, which is approximately 7,055 US dollars today. And so the Santana had a second chance at life. And what happened? It will go on to be very successful in China. This was an extraordinary turnaround for both the car and the country. Its affordability, ease of maintenance, and local production helped it become a staple in China. Proving that a car may not be suited for one market, but can find success in another. Ultimately, the Santana will go on to sell over 3 million units in China. And in each one of those units, families grew closer. Its family-oriented design and appeal propelled the Santana during its production years. Its dependable design resonated with a rapidly modernizing nation. By 1986, the 10,000 Santana rolled off the assembly line marking a milestone in China's journey towards mass motorization and making car ownership attainable for millions. The Santana didn't represent a car, 
It will symbolize a new era of freedom and opportunity. The biggest buyers of Santana were taxi drivers, as its roomy design facilitated comfortable passenger transport. The success of the Santana illustrates the power of adaptability and second chances within the automotive world. It found a warm reception in not only China, but also in Brazil, where it was embraced for its unwavering reliability and practicality. This versatility underscores a broader narrative. Both the Santana and the Camry exemplify how a single model can transcend borders and adapt to new, unique needs of diverse societies. There were also different versions of the original Santana, such as the Santana 2000 and Santana Vista, but those are videos for another day. In the end, the journeys of these two cars, a beloved sedan in America and a transformative vehicle in China, serves as reminders of interconnectedness of our global experiences. They are not just machines. They are vessels of stories, memories, and cultural evolution. Volkswagen defied the odds and made good on its second chance. The Santana became a vehicle that aided in the modernization of both China, but also Brazil as well, solidifying its place as a staple in the vision of both nations. And even after its initial release, the Santana continues to be a symbol of perseverance, practicality, and vision. And that's why the Volkswagen Santana is one of the most inspiring cars of history. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.